Hi and welcome to this lesson on the quadratic function. Now the quadratic function has a form that looks like this. If x is equal to a x minus p squared plus q. Okay. Now remember fx and x are the um, variables that we that we want to keep there. If x being the input and y being the output. Now the a variable, or sorry, the a parameter, it's not a variable, it will be a parameter, is, uh, determines the direction. You recall we said that every graph has a shape, and the shape of the parabola looks either like this, or it looks like that. And the shape is determined by the a. A also determines how fat or thin it is. So if A is positive, it is this upward sloping, it ends up going up, and when A is negative, this graph ends up going down. Okay, now the next one, so A determines the direction, and these two variables determine the position. P and Q determines position. And how do they determine position? Well, P is the symmetry line, in other words, X equal to P is the uh, the value around which the graph will have symmetry in other words you can fold it in half on that line and the parts will fold on top of each other same with this side so X equal to P is the symmetry line and Q is the maximum or the minimum value so here you can see that's the maximum val value Q or the minimum value Q. So that's the maximum output or the minimum output. Now what that means is that the coordinate of that point where it turns, that's called the turning point. I'm going to call it TP. The coordinate of that point is the point P comma Q. So let's look at a few examples. So here we have three distinct examples. And I just want to show you something that we can simplify each one of them a little bit and get a different form. Let me show you. For example, that first one, we can write out the two brackets as x minus 4, x minus 4, minus 9. And then this thing simplifies to x squared minus 8x plus 7 2x minus 1 x minus 1 minus 8 and that then sim simplifies to 2x squared minus 4x I'm multiplying in the 2 already plus 1 times 2 is plus 2, minus 8 is minus 6. Okay, now you might now notice that these ones are in a different form. So we can, we get two forms. This one can also be written as ax squared plus bx plus c. And you might feel that that's a more familiar um, format for you. But the first format is much more uh, convenient when we are trying to draw the graph. So I'm going to use both and just show you how um, each of them are used when we draw the graph. So the second one actually, we notice it is already in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. The only difference is that the um, b value, so we have a negative 3x squared plus 0x plus C is equal to 3. So there we have both formats for each one of those graphs. So how are we going to use it to draw the graph? Well, let's first look at the theory. To draw a parabola, the um, quadratic function's graph is called a parabola. So to draw a parabola, we need two things. We need the turning point, okay, which is the position. And we also need 
Now, I, well, let's first look at the turning point. So first we need the turning point. The turning point is actually quite easy. If we have the original format, so we're going to say, let's say we have y or fx. If x is equal to a x minus p, just note that's a negative p squared plus q. If we have that format, then the turning point is given by p comma q, where p is the symmetry line. So x equal to p is the symmetry line. And on this line somewhere it's going to turn. And wherever it turns, that that maximum or minimum value is called is the value Q. It's the maximum or minimum value depending on the shape of the graph. The second now what if we don't have that format? What if we have the AX squared plus BX plus C format? Well in that case our um, formula for the turning point, our P value, in other words, the equation of the symmetry line, we can get by using the formula two, uh, B divided by 2A. I won't go into the reason why at this point, okay, but that's the formula you will get. And we will get Q by taking this answer that we got for P and substituting it into the FX that I have. So I'll substitute in um, the answer for P to get the value of Q. That's how we'll find the turning point. Okay, what if I now want, uh, what do I need next? Next I need the intercepts. Now this one will have three intercepts at the most. Okay, we'll have our Y intercept. And like always, we make x zero okay and that will give us the y intercept the x intercept in in the case where we have ax squared plus uh, bx plus c my x will be zero and my y will be c okay so it's easy to find the y intercept in the one format the x intercepts we'll just make y equal to 0 or fx equal to 0 and then we'll solve for x. Now you'll see just now and each one of the, uh, for the x intercept I can have one intercept or actually two intercepts because um, the graph comes back I can have two intercepts one intercept or I can have no intercepts. In other words, the graph turns before it gets to the x-axis. So let's look at us drawing these. Now the important thing to remember always is when it comes, I first determine the shape of the graph. In this case we know that it is a parabolous shape. Okay, And um, we can see that in front for that first one the a value is equal to 1. So for the first one, the A value is equal to 1 in front of that bracket. It is a positive number, so the shape of the first graph, and let me keep in green as far as possible to not confuse you, the shape will therefore be a smiling shape, an upward shape. Okay. So the first thing we do is the shape, the next thing we do is the position. The position. Now here we see, okay, my P, my symmetry line, is the line X minus 4 equal to 0 and that means x is equal to um, 4 so in other words all I did was to take this bracket and I made it equal to 0 and we can see oh that's the value of p anyways okay uh, which means down here is my symmetry line at x equal to 4 Now, somewhere on that line, my graph is going to turn. And my graph is turning at the value negative 9. So, at negative 9, it's going to turn. And let me just go down a little bit. Maybe 
go, negative 9. Somewhere on here it's going to turn. Right there it's going to turn. So that's my position. Next I need to find the x or the y-intercept. Now I said that if we make x equal to 0, we'll find the y-intercept. And if you look at this part, the ax uh, plus b, ax squared plus uh, bx plus c, I mean. If we look at that part, when x is 0, then that's 0, and that is 0. So a positive 7 is my uh, intercept where I cut the y-axis. So the y-axis is intercept. I intercept the y-axis there. Now I need to find my x-intercepts. So for x-intercepts we make y equal to 0. So let me show you. And in this we make this equal to 0 and now I need to solve for x. Now there's a very easy way to solve this and that is to take the negative 9 so add it to both sides to get rid of it on the one side so I get that now I can take a square root on both sides to get rid of the the 2 but remember when we take a square root we put a plus minus in front so we get that x minus 4 is equal to positive 3 or x minus 4 is equal to negative 3 so that on the one side I see that answer must be 7 or x is equal to 1 which means these coordinates is 7 comma 0 and 1 comma 0 so going back to our graph there we go with 7 comma 0 there's the one intercept and there's the other intercept and now I just need to make this shape through all of those points turning at this point so there I go and don't forget your arrows at the ends and to write the name of your function on the graph fx now the graph for hx first of all we start with the shape of this graph okay we see that the value in front of the square is a negative 3. Negative 3 will be a negative value so or a negative shape I mean so it will be a downward pointing parabola. Now that downward pointing parabola must have a center line we must now position it somewhere. Okay, The position is found by the value P and Q so we first find the center line and here we see oh but there's not a x minus something but actually there was it it, it probably was x minus 0 squared negative 3 in front okay and since x minus 0 is just x it became um, just x squared now, since that is the case it means that the symmetry line is x is equal to 0 where is that line well it is appropriate that it's written there because that line is the y-axis the y-axis is the line x equal to 0 because everywhere on the y-axis x is equal to 0 okay so next is to find the maximum or the minimum value for this one we see it will have a maximum uh, a highest point and the highest point will be the value q or in this case just the plus 3 so positive 3 will be the maximum value that means that's going to be our turning point and finally we want the intercept as you can see we already have the x intercept the y intercept so now we just need to find the x intercepts how do we do that we make y equal to 0 now in this making y x equal to 0 sorry making gx equal to 0 we get negative 3x squared plus 3 we can subtract a 3 on both sides so that we have negative 3 is equal to negative 3x squared divide a negative 3 on both sides and then we find not 0, 1 we find that x squared is equal to 1 that means x is either equal to 1 
or x is equal to negative 1 because for both of those values x squared will be equal to 1. That gives me the point 1 comma 0 and the point negative 1 comma 0. Those are the two x-intercepts. So on the graph we have negative 1 and positive 1 and I just need to draw a parabola between those three points. So let me connect those three points and remember to write in your function name hx. Okay, now the last one, gx. First we notice the gx, uh, we first look at the shape and the direction is a 2 and it is upward shaping therefore like that well next we find the position this one's symmetry line is x minus 1 so his symmetry line is along the negative 1 and his maximum value or in this case his minimum value is since it's the lowest point is at negative 8 Now to find its intercepts, we have various ways to do it. Let's use this, this function to actually do it. Again, to solve this one, the x-intercept we have 0 is equal to 2x squared minus 4x plus minus 6. Okay. To solve it, we can divide everything with a 2, because 2 can divide in everywhere. So we can get x squared minus 2x minus 3. That gives me my two brackets, x negative 3 and x positive 1. It's equal to 0. That would mean that my two values for x is one is negative 1 and the other one is positive 3. So x negative 1, 0 is the one x-intercept and 3 comma 0 is the other intercept. Let's go place it on the graph along with the y-intercept. Okay, so here we find that our y-intercept, if x is equal to 0, or if we just put x equal to 0 in there and we solve it, we're still going to get the negative 6 as an answer. So negative 6 is our y-intercept. For our x-intercepts, we just worked it out. We had positive 3 and negative 1. And now we go and draw a parabola. And there we go. We've drawn all three of these parabolas. Okay, let me just quickly show you one last thing. If we can move these parabolas, the parabolas, their turning point, for example, If I move this parabola up, 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 do you notice that the x-intercepts get closer and closer and closer together? Okay, which means eventually they're going to be the same point. A parabola that turns on the x-axis has only one x-intercept. If he were to go any higher, he will have no intercepts. Let's see if we can do it with the blue one as well. We can move that one down, down, down until he has one intercept. And if he goes down any further, he will have no intercepts. How high can we move the green one to have no intercepts? In other words, what value must we add to fx? so that he can have only one x-intercept. Well, if we move him nine units higher, he will have one intercept. If we add more than nine units, he will have no intercepts. I hope you get the point. This is very important, especially when it gets to the more uh, difficult questions. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed it and that you understood this way of approaching uh, drawing quadratic functions or parabolas.